So what I like to do first with these modeling problems is always draw a diagram. So what I've done here is I've just kind of drawn a, a little Ferris wheel. You can see we've got the diameter of 18 meters. We know this thing reaches its lowest point just uh, two meters above the ground. And what we're going to do is use those measurements to determine the max and min points of our Ferris wheel. Uh, so we know that if our diameter is 18 meters and the lowest point is two meters above the ground, we, we know that this thing reaches a max height of 20 meters, which as it turns out is pretty useful for finding our amplitude. So what we're going to do is just kind of find the amplitude, the vertical shift, talk about the phase shift a little bit, and the period. So let's start with the amplitude. Uh, so you'll recall that amplitude is found by taking the maximum and subtracting the minimum. And now that we know what our maximum is, we can just take, take that 20 and subtract our minimum, which is going to be our two meters above the ground. And if we divide that by two, we're gonna get nine, which, which is our amplitude for our sine function. So next thing we wanna look at is our vertical shift. And you'll recall that that's max plus min over two. Uh, kind of a handy little formula to find the vertical shift. So I'm going to take my max value of 20. I'm going to add 2 and divide by 2 to get 11 for my vertical shift. All right, so the next thing to look at is the period. We know that the period is 360 degrees. You can kind of assume, let's say I get on this Ferris wheel, it's going to take 360 degrees for me to rotate through one complete cycle, right, to get back to my lowest point. So given that the period is 360 degrees, we know that period is equal to 360 over k. We can just kind of rearrange some simple algebra and get k is equal to 1. So that isn't really going to make a big difference in our equation. Okay, so the last thing we need here is our phase shift, and that should finish off our sine function that we were looking for. What I like to do to help me with these phase shifts is to just kind of envision a rough sketch of what our, our function would look like if we were to graph it. And because we know we're starting our rotation at our lowest point, we could envision our graph to look something like this. We're starting at this point right here at two. We're going through one full rotation in 360 degrees, which means we reach our maximum 180 degrees from our minimum. And what we wanna do is figure out what value for a phase shift would turn this thing into a sine graph. Now remember that sine starts at the value of the vertical shift. Okay, so if you picture this bar sort of cutting off the rest of this graph, we know that our sine function would start at this value right here. So we're looking for this, this particular angle that would give us this value. And as it turns out, if this whole period is 360, we reach a max in 180, we're going to reach this point here in half of the distance between 0 and 180, which as it turns out is 90 degrees. So if we envision this as as a sine graph that's been shifted to the right by 90 degrees, our phase shift would be 90 degrees to the right. So finally, our, our function, we could plug all of our determined values in. We've got our amplitude of nine here. We've got our vertical shift of 11. We've got our period. We found our K value to be one, which I haven't written here uh, for the sake of simplicity. And we've determined that we've got a phase shift of 90 degrees to the right. Okay, now there are several answers for this. Uh, this is just one of many. Okay, thanks for watching.